Well, thank you. Um, the title is Business Strategy to Create Shell Value in Green Era. Um, well, I have like 50 or 60 students. I was going to speak in Korean. Uh, if all of you are Korean, but you know, some of you, I don't think some of you can speak um, the Korean, so I'll just go ahead and speak English. Um, let me just try to find some focus of my lecture. Um, let me just ask you one question. I, I'm just going to ask you, what are you majored in? Uh, are you going to major? Are, are you are you majored in, majoring in? Um, the natural science and engineering, or are you majoring in social science and business and, and law? Uh, would you please raise your hand if you're majoring in natural science and engineering, please? No one. Good. So I don't have to ask a second question. You are all are from uh, social science or business or law. All right. Um, I'm an environmental guy. I'm a green, green person for 20 years. So, uh, any of you majoring in, in environment here? No. Okay, good. It's going to be something, something new for you then. Well, the KPMG, as you know, this is a consulting company. We have uh, the 140,000 professionals in, in all over the world. We do lots of consulting for business and government. And um, as, as you heard, I'm in charge of this Asia Pacific in uh, the KPMG's the Global Climate Change and Sustainability Department. We have about 700 people dedicated to this issue, and I'm in charge of the Asia Pacific. Well, um, let me just briefly quote uh, the 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 thing from the Michael Porter from Harvard Business Review, he said, you know, periodically the major new forces dramatically reshape the business world. I mean, this is, as globalization and the information technology have been doing for past several decades, climate change, which is the main issue of the environmental agenda recently, climate change in its complexity and potential impact may rival um, the, the IT and globalization. This is, this is kind of uh, the huge impact on our society. Uh, the green era with the constrained carbon, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to try to focus on the carbon among lots of issues of environment because carbon is, is the hottest and it's, it's most, um, the, the, the most popular issue in, in the environment. Well, the, when, when the global warming occurs, as you, as you all know, the ice is melting from the North Pole, or, or ice is melting. When ice melts, what happens? Sea level rises, right? Then, then it, it seems to be that's an environmental problem, but that's not the environmental problem. That's a social and political problem. That's why the carbon is, is one of the most popular issue in this environmental uh, area. Why? When ice melts, when sea level rises, you have to move your plant and factory along the coastal line to, to the inland, and you have to move your people living along the coastal line to the inland. This is the political and social problem. If you are a decision maker, or if you are CEO of some company, you have to think about that. Uh, you have to think about the, the impact by the climate change. And if you are a political leader, you have to think about the, the people, make sure the people are living safe. So international society try to stop this climate change, try to stop this global warming by changing the uh, long time, uh, the, the basic so social technology, which is fossil fuel technology. You know, the, the fossil fuel is the main reason for the climate change. So they try to shift foss from fossil fuel economy to green energy economy. 
So that's, that's, that's you know, like a paradigm shift which will be introduced several slides later. Then if you, if you really change, if you, if you change from, from fossil fuel economy to, to green energy economy, you can, you can do like, as you see from this slide, you can do like green growth by future, by just boosting future industry and, and economic growth and also you can achieve low carbon society uh, by you know carbon reduction and and, t and and consequently tackling climate change well some evidences we are still in financial crisis but the political leaders are still committing the even greener and even very costly commitment and 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 declaration like Japan and EU and Australia, they, they just declare they're going to cut down their carbon 20%, 30%, you know, like 60% by, by 2000-something, 2000 2030, 2050. It costs a lot to them, but they are still doing that in the middle of the financial crisis because this is social paradigm shift. They want to... They wanna, um, they want to have some initiative on this, this, this technological change. Well, if you, if you, want, to from, if you want to reduce the carbon um, like 50% in 2050, you have to adopt some technologies, right? Then there are two main technologies you have to, you better... Um, the focus on one is renewable energy, as you all know, it's like wind and, and solar, biomass, fuel cell, and so on. And the other technology is, is energy efficiency. It, it, energy efficiency are related to all sectors. It's not just the energy sector, but it, it relates to, 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 to related to the industry, transportation, buildings, and so on. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, what's going to happen if, if, if we, um, our society change from fossil fuel to green energy? From supply side, the economy, the, the cons used to be a concentrated supply to the distributed supply in, in green energy economy. That's why through the newspapers recently, you always find, easily find solar, wind and hydrogen and distributed power, energy storage, battery from, from algae chemicals, and so on. And, and technological side, um, the fuel intensive will be changed into technology int intensive. That's why the knowledge and technology based integration occurs. Like 10 years ago, this fossil energy and green energy issues are only related to energy sector, power sector, oil and gas sector. But now we, it, it's, it, it's all sectors concern. And demand side, um, the change will be from mass consumption to optimization. That's why every day you find, you find the word of smart grid and resource circulation, city, recycling in the newspaper. So this is uh, the the point here is is it's not just one environmental problem. It's not just matter of one sector in the industry. It is the social change. That's the point. Then there there must be uh, the policy to drive this this social change. Of course, there is the carrot and the stick, like like. European Union, they already started uh, the, the, the carbon regulation on plant. In European Union, they already uh, imposed like, you know, the carbon regulation on 12,000 installations emitting 50% of the entire regional the emission um, since 2005. And the other the other regulation is the, the carbon regulation on product. Like for example, in the EU again, setting the carbon dioxide emission performance standard for new cars. 
not only just um, generate, ge not only just generated from from um, from inside of Europe, but also from the outside of Europe. So, what's going to be impact for that? Now, you know there is a car called Sonata Hyundai, right? Everybody knows that car. That's it. How much would that be? That's twenty thousand dollars per car. Now we are exporting that car to European Union for twenty thousand dollars right now. But according to that directive of EU, we have to pay ten thousand dollar per penalty per car in two thousand sixteen. Then European customer has to pay thirty thousand dollars instead of twenty thousand dollars to buy the car which ain't going to happen. Nobody would buy it. So it's, it, it, it just drives, you know, the Hyundai's, the management uh, invests some attention and some resources and some money and some people into this green technology in their company. Well, there, there's also, also the carrot too, like called the Green New Deal. It's, it's, you pour in, you invest lots of money for infrastructure related to the green in the society so that you can have more jobs and, and, and try to boost the economy. Not only just green economy, but also the construction economy and power economy and everything. We call it green quantitative um, the ease. Let me skip all of that. It's just country's information. So the Korea, like we have a national green strategy, as you can see from this slide. You know, we have a vision of competitive green nation to be a com competitive green nation. Like we're going to be a G7 by 2020. We have like three pillars to achieve them. Um, the, the first one is energy security, like related to climate change. And second is new growth new growth engine for future future nation and third life quality national national status it's, it's, it relates to the life cycle the green life cycle of, of people so the government um, ha has a plan to change their their energy mix um, and and expand the renewable portion uh, among the energy as you can see from this nice beautiful graph Well, then, let me, I, I assume that some of you are from, from the, the business school. Um, so the, the, who might be interested in, in this topic, creating shared value. How many of you have heard uh, this, the concept of creating shared value? Can, would you raise your hand if you have heard it? Creating shared value? Right, a couple of them. Well, did you, then, then did, were you in, in the, uh, the conference from Michael Porter like a couple of months ago? No, one of my professors in my school is, it wasn't this concept with Michael Porter. Oh, okay. Great, great. You know, a couple of months ago, I gave a speech uh, in the forum with uh, Michael Porter because he came here to Korea like a couple of months ago. And, and uh, this is the this is the, some of the slides were were used in that presentation. Let me just give you some uh, some concept for 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 this this creating shell value. Well, the the business are usually um, do some supposed to do some good things to the community to the society while they can make while they are making profits out of the society out of the community. So, like old-fashioned, uh, the good work or good doing good thing for, for business or philanthropy, like just giving money to the people, giving money to the community. And, and, and it has been evolved into corporate social responsibility related to the sustainability. You know, they have some program to help the people. They have some program strategic action to uh, to do a good thing to their community and society. But now the Michael Porter uh, raised the issue or raised this concept of creating shell value. 
That's the if the business do the good thing to the community, that will create the profit maximization for for the business too, not just increase their cost. Well, this is scientific concept, you know, that as Michael Porter mentioned. But from my view, I have, you know, I, I, I'm a green guy, but I, I'm not a scientist. I used to work for, for the companies related to this issue, so I'm, a, I'm from private sector. Although the CSV's concept is, as I mentioned, social benefit is equal to profit maximization. And although the CSV concept is, is innovation and investment, and although that CSV insists it will give return to both society and business, what actually business feel is different. Business feels that it's too uncertain. The market is uncertain so that they cannot invest in. And, and the return is too long time to make a decision. And third, there are lack of examples. So I sort of um, try to, I always meet with the CEOs and decision makers of the, of the industry as, as a consultant. Um, I really have to translate this scientific concept so that CEOs can understand actually, can, can be persuaded. Well, this is the, uh, one of the concepts that I use when I persuade CEOs and decision makers of the, of, of the business. Well, social agenda, of course, that must be tackled and by the government. That's the governmental issue. That's true. But if that is not related to the business at all, business doesn't have to care for that. But I think it is related to the social agenda. The business is related to, to the social agendas like population growth, resource scarcity, energy security and price, and, and, and climate change even. How? That's related to the business through the stakeholders. Social agenda gives a great green signal to stakeholders like, like you know, government employees and investors and suppliers and, and customers and communities. And they get direct pressure to the business. So this is the way it functions. So I, I agree that the, the social agenda is a governmental issue, but it is related to the business. So if the business tackles them right way, they will get their maximum, I mean, the profit maximization. Some example, how that's, that's really working. Have you heard of the CDP? No, I guess that's just too environmental thing. Well, the CDP is Carbon Disclosure Project. It has been eight years. What they are doing, they are they are sort of um, they are sort of gathering of 551 institutional investors, whose uh, the the whose asset managing asset amounts to 71 trillion dollars it's it's i mean i mean it's they are gatherings of all kinds of investors that you can think of and and, and with them 80 government and corporate purchasers for the last 8 years they keep asking to 3000 companies all over the world biggest companies to disclose their carbon emission, to disclose their carbon strategy, and to disclose their green strategy, to disclose their green governance, to disclose their green target and system, to check if the 3,000 companies have the right compliance or right strategy to, to respond to this social issue like climate change. Why, why, why are investors are doing that? Because they have an experience to lose their invested money from the company who do not really respond to this, this social issue. 
if you can see this graph, it shows that the leader group, which shows the better, better performance in, in environment, uh, are, are better than, than, than the lower group. Second proof, it's uh, the Harvard Business Studies a couple of months ago, um, they uh, had, a, had a start, like, you know, as you, as you see here, the high sustainability companies significantly outperform their counterparts over long term, both in terms of stock market and accounting performance. So, I mean, this is kind of proof that I can show to you the investor as a stakeholder really give a great green pressure to the business. So if the business do not respond to their stakeholder, they will fail to, to, to make, make the money. It's very simple. It's the business's metal. So um, let me just, I have a bunch of examples here, but uh, let me just couple of introduce a couple of examples and, 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 and close my lecture. Well, this is, this is a company, uh, some of you already know, if you're Korean, uh, the Otogi is, is the, one of the, the biggest food and beverage company in Korea. And uh, we, the KBM uh, Korea gave, gave uh, the set up green strategy for, for, for this company. We, uh, so, so they turned out to be uh, a, a good green company like by, by considering their, their green concept to over all value chains from, from R&D to consumption of the product too. For example, like, you know, to the right hand, right, right hand side, you see the pre-washed rice. They already have this product, but we suggest to use that product as a green marketing. You know, using for consumer, if they purchase this, this pre-washed rice, they don't have to wash the rice again, meaning they save the water used for washing rice, meaning they prevent water contamination. So actually this company really help their clients to be green. I mean, this is one of the concepts that, that we can sort of draw out for the company. They, so this is kind of example that it relates to the green marketing. And well, this, this is an example of POSCO. You know, I used to work for POSCO for 10 years. And uh, in, in, uh, in 2002, it was May, uh, POSCO decided to uh, set up one department called New Business Development Department. And, and I was one of the member and we, had a mission to create business model or to find investment uh, spot for POSCO's future growth. No money limitation, no time limitation at that time. What I have, what, what my team, my, myself and my team was focused on was, was magnesium plate instead of steel plate because you know, POSCO are steel maker. So if, if we shift that, that we, we suggest that if POSCO shift from, from the steel to the magnesium, it will, the, the, the magnesium can be applied to the mobility products and, and IT products. So that uh, the, the, their cost and weight will be down and, and less energy consumed and the customer will get cheap and easy to handle product. What does that mean to the entire society? Well, the greenhouse gas emission, like carbon emission, which really matters in this society recently, that's due to, like, transportation is 20% of the total global emission. So that's kind of material amount that we can save um, through the uh, change of the raw material. So I'll just go into uh, this IT, um, sector example, which I think you will find it interesting. Um, like Google, as you all know, by the way, the Google is, is the, the most favorite, uh, the job that university students would like to get. And you know what's, what's, what's the company, the second 
we are the KPMG is the second company all over the world uh, who that which the students wants to go. Um, by the way, that IT sector, I last year I gave a speech to to the Business for Environment in Indonesia with with a with a Google uh, Google manager who spoke who who gave a speech on this. Google developed the Google Earth engine using their their satellite image and processing platform and application, and they now they they provide data catalog and workspace for monitoring land and forest. Why is this so significant? You know, the, again, the carbon emission due to the deforestation is also 20% of the total global emission. So it's very inevitable um, to, for the forest monitoring uh, to, to have the forest monitoring for, for greenhouse gas reduction. You have to measure before you reduce it. And you have to know what's the performance after you reduce it. So you have to measure them. And it would have been taken, without, without this engine, would have, been, would have taken like you know, 15,000 hours. Now it's just take less than a day. Well, conclusions. It's, it's, it's not an environmental issue, but it's a social paradigm shift, as I mentioned. And at money allocation from, there must be a money, money allocation from international negotiation, meaning $100 billion every year from 2013 to 2020. It's not a misspelling. $100 billion every year from the developed country to developing countries. And, and more regulations with, with, with more chances. And that's why business strategy must incorporate green era. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Kim. Uh, and now we have time for just one question, if sure. anyone would like to ask a question. Sure. Uh, thank you for your lecture. My name is Jong Sung Chae from Seoul National University. Um, actually, um, before I came to this um, forum, I expected to get an insight on the thesis I'm working on for my master's degree. Um, my topic is related to the UN Global Compact, which is one of the representative um, initiative platform related to the CSR. So I was wondering that what do the companies that maybe one of your clients would think about the, the joining the membership or the initiative led by kind of UN level, or if they just prefer to joining these um, UN led initiative for gaining legitimacy or any other just, um, purposes? Well, there are many types of motivations that my clients or, or the companies try to join like initiatives like UN Global Compact. But the, but the, the main, and, 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 and I think the, the main reason is peer pressure. If in the same sector, if their competitor are doing something, the CEO would do it without any logic thinking. So that's the, that's, well, I can name like tens of motivations, but I think that's the first motivation. And if you want to uh, get some help from your thesis uh, more, I'm gonna give a lecture on, on, on 7th of March for, for the UN Global Compact preparation for Rio Plus 20. You can come there then. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Kim.